Originally opening at Universal's Islands of Adventure in 2010, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey is a unique aerial thrill dark ride that allows riders to soar through the air and around Hogsmeade. The ride is set up by an impressively detailed land, the wizarding world of Harry Potter, and an extensive queue and castle tour of the iconic Hogwarts castle. Welcome to Amusement Labs, where we explore the incredible engineering behind your favorite theme park rides. Today, we'll be taking a look at the incredible engineering and innovation that went into this ride system, as well as the many groundbreaking effects used along the way. So sit back, relax, because this is how Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey works. How It Works at Amusement Labs is brought to you by our generous patrons. Join today and get early access and perks through the link below. Beginning in the early 2000s, the ride was originally slated to be based on the ill-fated 2004 film Van Helsing. A smaller version of the ride was to be constructed in the Lost Continent section of Islands of Adventure. Fortunately, this idea was never truly abandoned at Universal. The original installation of Forbidden Journey took the place of the still relevantly new Merlinwood section in the back of Islands of Adventure. This sorcery-themed area featured an Enchanted Oak Tavern restaurant, the Flying Unicorn, and the iconic, at the time, dueling pair of interlocking Bolligar and Marmarad inverted coasters known together as Dueling Dragons. With the introduction of the land and the strict skylines by J.K. Rowling, the Enchanted Oak was demolished, many remnants of the original Dueling Dragons aside from the ride were removed, where the queue and the name were reconfigured to align with the newly themed land. As a result, Dueling Dragons was walled off and hidden by trees to become Dragon Challenge and the Flying Unicorn was spared to become the Flight of the Hippogriff. During the construction of Forbidden Journey, many devoted fans of the franchise were extremely curious about what kind of ride would be found within the internationally recognized Hogwarts Castle. Luckily, we soon found out that Universal had acquired an exclusivity deal with the most groundbreaking ride ever devised during that time, which soon became one of the biggest chess moves against Disney. As mentioned, the storyline of Forbidden Journey is set up and heavily supported by your tour of Hogwarts Castle that has been brought to life using a number of special effects. While some of these effects are standard today, they were groundbreaking for their time. One of the effects used involves a similar concept to what can be likened to an early Musion eyeliner system. While most Musion systems today involve an angled film and floor projection, this pair of effects used to show Dumbledore, Harry, Ron, and Hermione is actually rather simple. This effect uses a large and at some angles visible sheet of standard glass. A light frost film is adhered to the back of the glass, creating a mostly clear screen. Actors are then filmed in front of a black background which eliminates any artifacts that may give away the holographic-like illusion. The footage is then mirrored and rear-projected from behind the glass. On its way through the glass, the majority of the light is diffused, creating a holographic effect. While the effect does seem flat, it is much easier to view from any angle, unlike the motion systems used today. However, being that the image is on glass, some of the light is reflected off the glass and onto the back surfaces of the room. While this isn't visible in the Dumbledore effect, it certainly is in the second effect shown Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Of course, the Wright's Cube became notorious not for this effect, but for Universal's ability to bring the magic portraits of the film series to life. Through several locations in the queue, there are multiple enchanted or magic portraits that move while looking like static portraits. This is actually something Universal patented back on May 4th, 2010, and maybe prior, and updated in 2013. In reality, this effect is rather ingenious using clever lighting. The magic portrait effect originally utilized multiple layers of material filters to transform the image from a standard LCD screen with its backlight turned very much down. These layers contain different organic substances, synthetics, and dyes that alter the resulting view of the image shown. Today, many installations use mainly digital filters instead. To sell the effect, several lights are aimed at the screens and are placed in illuminated environments. This creates a level of illumination that makes the light from the screen seem normal. Of course, you clicked on this ride not to hear about the effects of the queue, but the ride system as well. So now, let's get to the neat engineering facts and figures of this upsy downsy spins aroundsy wizard operated throw ride. In collaboration with German industrial equipment firm KUKA, 
the Generation 2 RoboCoaster delivers a truly versatile aerobatic thrilling experience with nearly unlimited possibilities. Each of the ride's 47 ride vehicles relies on a Kuku robotic arm to manipulate a bench that four riders sit on. Weighing in at 5,258 pounds, each KUKA KR500 R2830, yes I looked up the model, is capable of carrying a payload of 500 kilograms or just over 1,100 pounds with a maximum load of 611 kilograms. With a maximum reach of 2,826 millimeters or 9.27 feet in either direction, this six axis arm is not only IP65 dust and water resistant, but is capable of accuracy within 0.08 millimeters or three one thousandths of an inch, about the thickness of a human hair. Each motor that controls each axis is also not just a simple electric motor but a three-part actuator. Each casing houses a motor for articulation and a coder for precise movements in a normally engaged brake. This means that when an axis is not moving, it becomes extremely rigid until the power is provided to open the brake and allow movement. At the very end of the arm is a universal mounting rig where Universal Creative designed an enchanted bench setup for four bucket-style seats, ratcheting over-the-shoulder restraints, and a fixed cap to the restraints as well. All of these pieces, including the side embellishments, are made from hollow fiberglass, which helps keep the total payload under the operational limits of the arm. All of this, the arm, the seats, and the computers that run the arm, and the audio for the seats are all mounted on a four-legged tetrapod structure. At the corners of the base are four heavy-duty caster wheels supporting the entire weight of the system and roll on steel plates. These evenly distribute the stress onto the ground instead of straight through the concrete, which could cause fractures. Through the side of an I-beam track, power is provided by conductor bars that power the entire system. In the middle of the base structure, four motors use pinch wheels to grab a plate above the I-beam to move the entire system along the track. Loading and unloading on the ride is done via a moving station. The arms reach through a wall with a gap large enough to fit the arm while still moving. The seats remain stationary and a conveyor belt matches the speed of the seats as they move through the station. The entire master system that runs the ride and communicates with arms can allow the arms to also bypass the station and have them not hold the seats into the station. An attendant is responsible for checking the restraints and confirming they are locked via a green button on the side of the seats. If the restraints haven't been checked, the entire ride will slow down to a stop until they're cleared. Throughout the ride, there are multiple transition scenes that rely on screens to relay the storyline. This is achieved by multiple carousels of dome screens of 4K projectors. Each carousel meets with the arm and rotates at a matching rate to follow the arm's movement. The arm then moves riders closer to the dome screen so that the video envelops their view. In the multiple highly detailed practical scenes of the ride, there are several instances where moving figures interact with riders. These figures are mounted on stationary KUKA robotic arms of different models as well. Because of the accuracy of the movements, the figures are able to get very close to riders, but still within the clearances of the seats. Some of these figures are Dementors and the infamous Whomping Willow. Once the arm leaves the loading station, it can begin its program by having riders sail through and around sets. Riders head into the first dome screen carousel as they fly around Hogwarts Castle. They then encounter a dragon that later meets them in physical form once they leave the carousel, getting in their face with fire or mist. Further in, riders encounter Dementors on more Kuka arms. Proceeding into the next carousel, riders are taken to a Quidditch match by Harry. After leaving the carousel, an effect uses a photo taken of riders' faces and projects it onto a missed screen. Finally, the last carousel shows Harry leading riders out of danger and back to Hogwarts. The arm pulls riders back out of the carousel and this concludes the tour around the castle. It then rehomes and moves them back to the loading station where they can unload. With all these aerobatic moves and close calls with props, safety is the number one priority on Forbidden Journey. Should anything happen, which is extremely rare and has yet to happen, each KUKA robotic arm is able to detect collisions. Because of the accurate encoders and control of the motors, the system is able to detect spikes in current which indicates a resistive force or collision. It's able to then quickly reverse course and back away from such an impact and halt the ride. When the ride needs to evacuate, there are several catwalks just out of view that each arm can rotate to in order to unload riders. 
Another option allows arms to retract and go to their home positions and proceed down the track to the unload station, bypassing any interactions with the ride. Overall, the RoboCoaster G2 from Dynamic Attractions is able to deliver a second-to-none thrilling experience inside Harry Potter in the Forbidden Journey thanks to meticulous engineering and technology that's always ahead of the curve. While the ride around Hogsmeade and through the Wizarding World may not be for all, it's an experience you won't want to miss. I hope you've enjoyed this small dive into how Harry Potter in the Forbidden Journey works. Please subscribe, ring the bell, and if you really enjoyed the video, please consider joining my Patreon. If you still have any questions, you can ask them below, and let me know what your favorite ride is, and I might try to make a video on it. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the parks.